Uh, yeah, I think it gives us an opportunity now to push forward um, with a number of uh, decisions that we've been waiting on. I think uh, head coach being one of those um, and a number of player contracts as well. Um, through this period, we've certainly uh, appreciated the support that the local community has given us. Um, and, you know, whilst we were confident the whole way along, I think it is, yeah, it's a welcome relief that um, uh, they announced that we are one of the sides that will stay. The players, um, have they been affected by what has been going on, especially the ones that are waiting to find out whether or not they were going to be re-signed? Yeah, I mean, there's some ongoing contract negotiations that uh, will take a little bit more time anyway. Um, I think most of the playing group have been fairly focused on uh, their performance on the weekend. They've had uh, obviously goals each week, uh, games each week, and um, they've been heavily focused on making sure their preparation's right. Um, but then there are other players, I think not necessarily in this team, I think there's certainly some, some players in other teams um, uh, who have had uh, a difficult period of time. How do you feel about how this has all been handled? It's been a limbo for a couple of months. Uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, I certainly understand why the decision's taken the time that it's taken. Um, from, I guess, um, everyone who's involved, it would have been nice to have had the decision made earlier so that we can make decisions uh, you know, for our future sooner. But um, it's understandable that things take time. Obviously, a, a huge relief for you now, but was it starting to, to take its toll on the players and on, on yourself? Not so much our players, no. I think, uh, like I said before, the um, you know, the players are very focused on getting a good performance on the weekend from a, a coaching and staffing point of view. Um, we were very focused um, and, and we sort of had assurances and we were pretty confident that, um, you know, it was one of the founding teams of Super Rugby and uh, the success that we've had over the years and the support that we have from the, the local area um, and the uh, finances moving forward. You know, we were pretty confident that... Um, the decision was going to go this way um, for us anyway. It's no doubt damaged the game of rugby nationally, locally. How tough has it been for someone like yourself who's you know, dedicated your life to the game to see it kind of drag through the mud the past few months? Uh, I guess you, it depends which way you look at it. I think there's there's been plenty of other news um, about rugby over the last couple of months. Um, I think the people who are, you know, you think about the Rebels and the Force, uh, now those guys are still... Um, probably waiting a decision and, and it's going to affect them. Um, but like I said, for us, um, we've been very focused on, on our Super Rugby campaign. I think uh, there's enough good stories in Super Rugby um, and there has, have been enough good stories in Super Rugby over the last period of time um, for people not to be too, too concerned about this. I think now going forward, having, five, uh, having four teams versus five teams, um, there are some issues that we have to sort out there, but um, um, you know, working together, and it's not just um, it's not it's not a matter of uh, losing a team and, and you know forgetting about that region or, or that team. It's about making sure that we can help that region um, to still enhance rugby in that area. Andy Marinos, that seems our boss, said that one of the silver linings is that some clubs have played the best rugby they've ever played because they've been fighting for the future. A, would you agree with that statement? And B, has there been any positives out of this? Uh, well, that's certainly not true from our point of view. No, I mean we, we didn't go out there to prove anyone wrong. Um, but you may be over in Africa. Um, that was the case. Um, like I said, I think that there's been really good focus. Um, when, when you get into the Super Rugby competition, you have a really good focus, and it's a um, it's a great time for players to come together as a as a as a team. Some teams might have used um, this decision to bring them tighter together, but I think most teams have a, you know, this decision is relatively new compared to the preparation for this Super Rugby season. Guys um, and teams have started preparing for this season three, four months ago. Um, and that's a special time for players. I think Super Rugby is a, a wonderful competition to play in the quality of, of the game, um, but the camaraderie that you get... Um, dropping down a level from international level, I think um, the guys really enjoy being a part of that team atmosphere. I was going to say, this might be a bit hard for you to answer because you won't be here next year, but what's the flow-on effect going to be, I guess, for the clubs that do stay in China 
find homes for the players now? Yeah, we're not sure of that yet. Um, I guess that's something that, that we will um, um, appreciate um, in the coming months. I think uh, we need a little bit of direction from both Sansar and the ARU in terms of our squad size um, and whether the, the players um, have to move provinces or, or get reallocated to provinces or it's their choice. And we're waiting for all those decisions still, obviously. Um, aware that this decision was coming up. We have looked at um, some of the other provinces in terms of their playing group um, and identified some players that we think might fit our organisation. But at the same time, we've got a, a number of negotiations that are going on at the moment with players who are currently here. And um, our stance is that we, we certainly want to make sure that we retain the players here before we look elsewhere. Steve, um, you, you talk about the players being able to quarantine themselves from this decision, but as an overall organisation, I guess you can understand there have been a lot of worried people here about their futures. Yeah, I think it's ebbed and flowed. I think there were times where we were a little bit uncertain and then we'd get a bit of assurance. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's probably what uh, those teams are facing at the moment. Um, it, it's not only the, the playing group who get affected, it's the staff, um, it's the people who work in the organisation, it's the junior academy programs that are set up, it's the pathways programs, it's um, everyone who's associated with that high performance team um, who is affected. So it's, it's more far reaching than just the players. Um, and, and I'm sure you're right, there, were, there are people within this organisation who were probably concerned at times. With uh, regards to um, the Brumbies being put through the ringer like this and the uncertainty over the last week, can you understand why the Brumbies were put through this process in the first place? I mean, your foundation club, most successful super rugby side in Australian history, the most financially viable, yet the Brumbies were not quarantined like New South Wales and Queensland. Can you understand why? I mean, it just seemed nonsense, really. Uh, yeah, I, I think I've, I've expressed that in the past, that um, I think it was ridiculous to talk about the Brumbies ever um, leaving this competition. Steve, there's a lot of talk at the moment about the state of Australian rugby and the quality of it and what have you. How would you compare like today's game to your playing days and do you think going back to four teams will kind of return it to the height of, the, height of its powers when you were playing? Oh, there's, there's a number of different ways you can look at it. I, I think when you look at it from the top level, it's, it's how those guys come together. When you know, Back in Super 12 days, um, we had three teams and it was always difficult coming together because you had such a strong bond as an individual team throughout Super Rugby. I think the challenge at that next level is making sure that you combine the players, irrespective of four teams, five teams, six teams. That's always going to be the challenge. There's enough talent within Australia um, and I think there's enough talent with four teams or five teams for us to be successful at the next level up. So that's the challenge moving forward. I think, um, you know, like I said, there are a number of people who, who are going to be affected by this. It's not just the playing, the playing, um, the playing group at that province. It's not just the 35 contracted players. It's it's a number of people uh, within the organisation and the the junior players who are aspiring to get to that provincial team as well. Putting your Wallabies coaching hat on, do you think this will have a positive or negative effect going to four teams for the Wallabies? I think it's um, uh, it's a difficult question to answer, isn't it? I mean, that's the that's the crux of the decision. Um, is four teams better for Australian rugby than than five teams? Um, and you're not really going to know until um, you know a couple of months, a couple of years down the track to see. Uh, Again, if we, can, if we can get the right combination and we can get the flow on effect to the Wallaby level um, from the four teams, then there's no issue. You know, I think that um, this year we've probably struggled a little bit in Super Rugby um, as a conference. I think the Australian teams probably haven't played as well as they need to have played. Um, but what I've seen in the last couple of weeks is, is the provinces really turning around their um, performances. So, yeah, there'll be another adjustment period now. I think there were concerns for people who were going to be affected by it. So, like I said before, it's not just the playing group. Obviously, there's, there's a few players in the Wallaby camp at the moment who are potentially going to be affected by it, but um, it's, far, it's, yeah, it's more far-reaching than that.